Pumped up, happy Saturday. Today we're going to be talking about role prompting, um, and I'll kind of, you know, interchangeably call it persona prompting, just because most people refer it to as either. So we'll talk about what it is. Um, we'll talk about whether it's effective or not, when it is most effective, and if you're going to use it, how to do it um, in the best way possible. And so. I was kind of led down this rabbit hole because it was something that I had done a lot, you know, throwing something in the system message or in the prompt that says, you know, pretend you're X, Y, Z, um, you know, act like, I feel like it's been a best practice for a while, kind of unstatedly. Um, and so I wanted to kind of dive deeper and see, okay, what effect does it really have? Um, so in terms of just level setting, when we're talking about persona or role prompting, we're talking about when you assign a specific role or persona to an LLM to influence its response. So pretend you're a JSON structure, sentiment classifier, you know, talk like a lawyer, so on and so forth. And so I wanted to see does this actually help with accuracy based tasks? Because there's no argument as to whether it affects, you know, creative writing type tasks. Like if you tell the model to talk like a cowboy, like it certainly will. Um, but what about tasks where you're focused on accuracy? So First paper um, is called Better, Better Zero Shot Reasoning with Role Play Prompting, March 2024. So relatively recently, um, the only caveat is they they use GPT 3.5. So you know it happens a lot with these papers where they don't use the latest models, and so it's hard to take away the same findings that they have if we're using a much more capable model. Uh, but they talk about you know a pretty big increase, which I'll move my big head out of the way from you know 53 to 63 percent on the aqua data set which is like an accuracy math type of data set and so diving in here they implemented persona prompting in an interesting way they didn't just you know add like a little bit something in the beginning of the system prompt that says you know pretend you're xyz they created a user design prompt as they called the role setting prompt and then they would send that prompt to the model and get a response from the model um, and then they would use that in the next request as well. Um, and so that, you know, we'll look at an example. So this first one would be this user designed, what do they call it, role setting prompt. So from now on, you're contesting and blah, 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 blah. And then they would send it and get an output. And they actually would send it multiple times and then pick the best output they got back. So the idea is that, like, the model is acknowledging the role. And then so once they have this second one, select it from the multiple for every additional request they would send both of these messages so then for every new request they were sending three um, three messages along and so you know what that looks like basically is you know prompt one role setting prompt two role feedback and then they would send you know one two and then the newest question um, and then here were some interesting kind of prompt designs that they had um, in terms of the like persona prompt being used. Um, so that first one, and you can see generally like more context leads to higher accuracy, um, including when they start to add that second message in there. Here were the different personas tested. Um, you know, I would say advantage means in domain, so related, um, ir irrelevant, and then kind of disadvantage. You see generally a trend of, hey, the people who are in domain and advantage tend to score higher for the um, for the most part. And again, this is GPT 3.5. And looking at the results here, um, you know, on average, I think it outperformed by like 10%. Um, but, you know, you could kind of look at any of these and kind of dive in. You could see, um, you know, in this case, zero shot prompt was actually the best. Uh, we just like you know, pass around. You can see in this case, it really clearly blows it out of the water for something like symbolic reasoning. And so across the board, like it did have a positive effect. Um, but I think there's a few like interesting takeaways and caveats. Um, so first that role setting prompt was handwritten, um, which can be challenging and time consuming. The second one is that they are selecting the best role feedback prompts, which could take many runs. And then, you know, sending three messages for every additional user message can be like costly in terms of cost and, and latency and I would say that's not like typically what we think of when we think of persona prompting and again it takes like a little bit of additional setup and then lastly it was done with GPT 3.5 so it's hard to know if this would hold for newer models 
and then a, a more recent one, I think this was October, um, with the great title, um, kind of looks at the opposite side of persona prompting. And I think the most interesting part is that this, the paper used to be a pro persona paper. Um, so in November of last year, 2023, um, basically said, you know, having personas improves the performance and then just they updated it and says does not improve. So it's kind of all you really need to know. Um, but they tested a bunch of different models for families across thousands of fact-based questions. Here's what the templates look like. They are very basic. Um, so these are very much so, hey, you are an X or you're talking to an X. And so what they found was across all, you know, thousands of um, factual based questions, they found system prompts or personas and system prompts didn't improve performance and sometimes it had negative effects. In the cases that it did have positive effects, they were both, it was small and they couldn't, you know, for more, you know, more or less reverse engineer how to know to pick the best persona. They tried a bunch of different methods and they couldn't find something and they kind of likened the chance of picking the best one to basically just randomly picking from the assortment that they had, which I think is the more important thing is that you would think like the in-domain ones like this and that worked will work the best and they, they do, but the effect size is so small that knowing how to pick the best one was clearly a challenge and I think is my biggest takeaway from this. Um, you know, another kind of one that takes both sides. Um, so this one is a persona prompt. They in, a introduced something called the Jekyll and Hyde framework, um, which is a framework that has multiple LLM calls in an evaluator. First step is, hey, generate automatically generate a persona based on the task. Um, so it's a math task, you know, generate a persona based on that through a, um, a prompt. And then they would have the problem be solved one, you know, two times, one with the persona and one without. So if it's, hey, what's two plus two? They would run that once and then they'd also run it with, hey, you're a mathematician, what's two plus two? And then both outputs were sent to an evaluator and the best, you know, the best, better solution was chosen. And so here's a little bit of that flow. Um, so persona gets generated, it goes to the solver, which goes one with the persona solver. So that's when the persona is included, one without, and then it goes through this kind of evaluator, evaluator workflow. And they included the template here, um, which we've added up into prompt hub so you can try it out. Um, we have a better one later, um, so sneak peek there. <coughs> and so again, um, so they did use GPT-4 and Llama 3, which is which is cool to see. Um, and let me see if I have the takeaways listed here, yeah. So in some cases, framework leads to better outputs, in some cases it doesn't. Um, something that I thought was interesting that the difference between persona and base for GPT-4 is really slim in some cases. Um, so coming back here, we're looking at base and persona we could see it's very close. Like we're talking about really small performance differences a lot of the time. Here we see a large one. Um, and like for some use cases that is important. That like 0.5% increase is gonna be actually material. Um, but you can see even in this case, like we're talking about really small amounts and base and persona are very close. Um, so I think for smarter models, I think the effect of using a simple persona that we saw here, um, is not really going to do a ton. And I would say additionally, like judging a base prompt against a framework isn't quite like, you know, fair for lack of a better word. Like this Jackal and Hyde framework has two outputs, an evaluator, and it's like barely performing the out performing the base prompt. And so like I said, that like one percent, half a percent, you know, in some cases 2% better outputs is important for some people. Um, for others who don't want to go ahead and like implement a whole framework, um, you know, you don't have to. Next up is my favorite. So this one is older, which I will note. It's from, you know, basically a year ago at this point, 2023. But I still think it's maybe the strongest evidence of pro persona prompting. Um, so they introduced a framework as well. It's much more straightforward. Uh, basically, instruction goes to an LLM to generate a persona, and then that identity is included in the system message, and then the original instruction is sent as the user message to the LLM to process. So if the instruction is described the structure of an atom, this identity gets generated, and then um, I mean they show here side by side what it looks like with and without the identity. And yeah, they have a really great template for this as well. Um, 
they use in context learning, um, which you can kind of see here, where we have instruction, agent description, instruction, agent description, um, which I think was really helpful and why I like it a lot better than the persona generator in the Jekyll and Hyde framework. And in this case, they tested a few variants of so vanilla prompting, vanilla prompting with the static description of like, hey, imagine you're an expert in this field, saw this instruction, and then expert prompting, which is using the generated persona. And so, again, we see why I think the study is great and really telling is it reinforces a lot of the other things that we've seen in the other papers. So the vanilla prompting and the vanilla prompting with a static description are like barely separated. Um, whereas this kind of expert prompting one, you know, takes the cake. Um, and yes, they did use an older model, but I think it reinforces that a point that I think a basic persona that we saw in a variety of almost all the other papers um, is definitely not going to increase accuracy. And I think we can be pretty confident in that. But if you use, I would say, a more exhaustive and comprehensive persona, that can actually lead to accuracy gains. And so that's what really hits home for me um, in this case. And then lastly, last resource we'll check out um, is from the folks at Learn Prompting who had a similar hunch about this this summer, um, specifically by Sander. And so they ran an experiment that was supposed to be part of their prompt report, but I don't, or I don't know if it is part of it or it's going to be included in a future edition, but basically they took a bunch of MLU questions and tested it across a bunch, a variety of different personas. Um, and so here we're, you can see the personas. So um, you know, farmer, police officer, they also did other um, methods as well. And like firstly, you can see the best method um, was two shot chain of thought. Um, and most importantly, the most interesting part is you can see that there's a genius and an idiot persona, and the idiot persona outperforms the genius one, which is, I mean, it's kind of like how do you, what do you, what do you do with that in terms of how can you make a credible argument against that? Um, here are the the prompts themselves, which they shared in that resource, which will also be linked below. And these are like pretty built out. Um, I think more importantly is looking, is judging these personas versus the personas generated in the expert prompting framework because they, they differ. This talks about like, you always get problems correct, like this and that kind of talking about like that person versus how they're spo supposed to act or who they are. Um, so I do think there is still some nuance here to, to be discovered. So again, in, in terms of when role prompting is most useful, as we, I mentioned earlier, any type of creative writing. Um, so you're going to talk like a, a cowboy, whatever, like it will, it will do that. Um, people also introduce guardrails via persona prompts, um, as well. And I think that's like an interesting layer. You obviously would need to do a little bit more than that, but it's like an interesting thing to keep in mind. And I think something that the, we can take away from the expert prompting framework, um, is that if you're going to create a persona, it needs to be specific, detailed, and, you know, it should be automated, I would say, um, Throughout a variety of these papers, they also tested human versus LLM generated personas, and the LLM ones almost always performed better. Um, and again, the expert prompt framework and template are a great starting point for this. So yeah, good for open-ended. I would say it's still, I would say it's generally not beneficial for strictly accuracy-based tasks, especially for newer models, models, and if you are using simple persona de definitions, I still think you could probably increase accuracy if you were to use more exhaustive and comprehensive persona, uh, personas, you know, specific and detailed as we just kind of talked about, although there's not as much evidence there. Um, and if you are going to do it, extra prompting is a good way to start. Cool. A little bit longer today, but it was really fascinating to kind of go down this rabbit hole. And there's so much new stuff coming out all the time and things that we're learning and we're passing on. Um, so I hope it helps. Thanks.